What's in the box? Hello world. Right now we're living in Canada and these are the top Japanese things we can't live without. Well, technically we can live without them. So a more accurate statement would be Japanese things that we made an effort to get in Canada because we find them to be more convenient, nice, do specific things, or do things better than other items normally purchased in Canada. But that wouldn't be a succinct title. Luckily, nowadays, a lot of these items can be purchased without going to Japan. However, for some of these items, we did purchase them in Japan and bring them back with us. So let's start off in the kitchen and travel back to a time where razors don't exist. This over here is a hot water boiler slash warmer. It keeps water hot at all times, and you can choose between three different temperature levels. We use it for making tea or coffee, but also as a quick way to get water up to boil when cooking. The handle makes it easy to carry. The magnetic plug allows you to quickly move it without unplugging from the socket. And it's insulated so that it uses less energy to keep the water hot and it's safe to touch the sides of, unlike some kettles. Ah! The one thing I dislike is that dispensing is a bit slow. You can open up the top and pour, but you have to be very careful. Are you okay? Mm. This is a tamagoyaki pan, which you need for making tamagoyaki. <laughs> these, these are all knives I bought in Japan from Yusen. This HAP40 knife is super thin and hard, so it's an absolute dream to cut with. You have to take care of it though, so I have wood cutting boards and dry it right after using. Also whetstones to keep it sharp, but it cuts so beautifully, it's worth it. This is a rice cooker. You can get a basic one button Black & Decker one in Canada, but here's what the Japanese one does better. There are measuring lines inside and a measuring scoop that makes it foolproof to get the proportions correct. So two cups of rice, fill it up to the two mark, press a button to start cooking, and wait about an hour. You can set a timer to delay the start of cooking. We usually use it to have freshly cooked rice when we wake up in the morning. Now for the lightning round. It can keep the rice warm after cooking. It's more compact and lightweight. The lid stays attached and doesn't drip all over the place. There's a handle for easy carrying. There's a holder for your rice scooper. There's a setting for a variety of grains, but most of the time we push the cooking button and it works. The only con I can think of is that if you need rice quick, it's faster to cook it on the stove. We eat rice almost every single day, so it's obviously very convenient for us to have. This is in fact a basic inexpensive model, but they have some super high-end ones that cost many times more. These are rice ball makers. You can make onigiri with your hands, although it gets messy. You can use saran wrap, which isn't so bad. But this rice ball maker is reusable and easily makes nicely shaped ones. Also, because you don't need to touch the rice with your hands, it's more sanitary, especially if you're making the balls to eat at a later time. This over here, this is an ajitama maker. Ajitama literally means flavored eggs. It's what you would get in a bowl of ramen. You make it by marinating an egg in soy sauce, mirin, sake, and sugar. Do you need this special device? No, but if you want to make a small batch and use less marinating liquid, this comes in handy. This is a TR water pitcher. Why the Japanese one? Well, to start, you can safely pour hot water directly in it. They pour well, so you don't need to hold it with any finesse. You can use any angle you like, and it still pours with a consistent flow. With this design, you have to be careful to pour it gently, or the contents glug out, splashing around. And with this one, well... They're easy to clean. With this one, if you have a small hand, you can squeeze it in, but how are you supposed to keep the handle portion clean? There's a locking lid, so you can place it on its side, or place it this way. With this, it's just a no-go. 
and is a bit too big to fit some places. Even this two liter design can't fit. They're simply really well designed for such inexpensive items. This is a thermos. I like them because they are generally better insulated and lighter than North American versions. Some might say I'm obsessed. I made a dedicated video about all my thermoses, so if you really want to get into it, I suggest watching that. This is a grater for daikon. When grated, it's called daikon oroshi. And Japanese eat it with lots of stuff, like with tempura, yakiniku, or hambagu. There's also graters with smaller holes for garlic or ginger. These are bento boxes, or in other words, lunch boxes. This is a nyanta. Canadian Tupperware or Rubbermaid don't fit as nicely into a bag as they tend to be broad and flat. You can put it sideways, but things can leak or your presentation can get messed up. Japanese bento boxes tend to be tall and narrow. There are some that are designed to be stacked and even come with a bag. So it makes it very easy to put right side up in a bag. And there's a lot of little accessories, like tiny sauce containers or side dish holders to separate items from one another. This is a remote control for a Philip Hughes light, which is not a Japanese light. A standard Japanese light is shaped like a disc that you can easily install on ceilings. They come with a remote where you can change brightness levels and sometimes even the color. You can't get these lights in Canada, but the Philips Hue lights are similar. They look like regular bulbs, but you can control their color temperature or brightness via an app. I found the app unconvenient so I bought these little remotes that allow you to pre-program in settings as well as change the brightness. The app is nice though, as you can turn off all your lights at once or put the lights on a schedule. But honestly, I just use the remotes 99.5% of the time. You can even get pricey bulbs that do all sorts of colors. So of course, I use it to change my light from blue during the day to orange at night, just like the cheaper standard bulbs can do. This is a pen. I like really thin points, and it's very easy to find Japanese ones with thin points. I use 0.4 millimeter. They're also good for stabbing people. Eh? This is a sifting litter box for cats that separates the urine from the feces. Pee goes down to the bottom and is absorbed by a sanitary pad. The poo stays on top and you can scoop it out. I find the odor control is great, and if some pellets fall out, they're easy enough to clean up. This system is common in Japan. Although I've found that there's a Purina breeze system you can get in North America. Here's some cost saving tips. You can use dog training pads or cat pee pads to collect the urine. You can use wood pellets, which are super cheap to buy. They do create a lot of sawdust though, which is why we brought this box from Japan as it has a deep collection tray on the bottom. This is a diatomaceous earth bath mat. It's made of highly water absorbent materials. So if you step on it with wet feet and wait a few minutes, the surface is dry again. The con is that these are colder and harder than a bath mat. So what I do is towel off while standing on it, which gets most of the water off, then move over to this polyester bath mat from Ikea. This is a blow dryer. I like the Nano E feature. It blows negative ions and is gentler on the hair. When it dries your hair, it also treats it. This is 10 years old, so maybe the technology has gotten even better. So what's in the box? Another box. It's a Toto washlet. coming to life. This is a washlet from Toto, which is a fancy Japanese bidet. My brother in Winnipeg bought a Tushi, which I was able to try out, but honestly, it wasn't too precise and got a lot of things wet down there. So this is a big splurge item, as it was the one thing from Japan I literally thought about every day. This model is not cheap, and is actually more capable than the standard one we use in Japan. What I like about this is the accurate placement of the spray at your private parts. Thank you. 
You can change the pressure. You can change the position. You can oscillate the spray. And you can widen the spray to get more coverage. And you can save all these settings in two profiles. It has a built-in hot water reservoir, so you're not blasted with icy cold water in the winter. The seat is also heated. There is a dryer, but it does take a while. And as you can tell, it has a remote, which seems a bit unnecessary. This model has the eWater Plus system, which I'm optimistic about because it ionizes the water and then sprays the toilet before you do your business. And then once again, after you're done. This is supposed to prevent things from sticking as well as keep things cleaner longer. Reviews are positive and it sounds like it's not a gimmick, but time will tell. This is my consolation prize because ideally, I'd love to have a Japanese setup where the sink, toilet, and bathing room are all in separate rooms, but that would be so expensive to do in Canada. The only con is that you need to get power to it. And well, it's also expensive. And also, I need to get a new toilet with an elongated bowl because I can't read product descriptions. I know some of you are thinking, what about things common in Canada that we like better than in Japan? There's the dishwasher. I think they've seriously improved since a couple decades ago. Now I can throw virtually anything into it and it cleans it. Shin has proven this over and over. They're much quieter than before and they use less water and energy than if you were to hand wash. Then there's the stove with oven. Japanese homes usually only have tiny fish grills, which we really like, but it's great to have a big oven where you can bake multiple things on multiple racks. And last but not least, it's the clothes dryer. They're not common in Japan, and if you want one, you have to add modifications to your home, like vents and electrical outlets or gas hookups. We actually like hang drying certain laundry in the sun, but for the majority, a dryer is so convenient. Hey, can you tell me if it, you see it coming out? <laughs> Oops, I guess that's why you need to be sitting on it. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Peace.